Thank you for joining us for the Myopia podcast. I'm really excited to have uh, Joe Berady with me. Joe's been a, a good friend over the years, and uh, we've now come back together in the Myopia space, which I'm really excited about. And so thank you for joining us for this episode of the Myopia podcast. Optometric Insights Media proudly presents the Myopia podcast, where we give you the latest myopia research, clinical topics, and industry insights. Make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome myopia content. And now to our host, a massive myopia manager himself, Dr. David Kading. Thank you for joining us for this episode. Joe, it's uh, great to have you again. Thank you for coming on the podcast with me today. Thanks for having me on, David. It's always great to spend time with you. Yeah. You know, Joe and I got to know each other when he was at Tier Science. And, you know, one of the awesome things is here's this president and CEO of these really cool companies that's, you know, made some things really awesome. But he, uh, he started off in optometry school, just like me. Joe, can you walk us through your journey from where you, you know, where you graduated and, you know, academia and how you got started in the industry and how you're now at Euclid? Yeah, sure. I'd, I'd love to. Um, so I g- did graduate from SUNY College of Optometry back in 1993. And, um, my first uh, action was to go out and buy a private practice from a retiring uh, doctor. So I uh, bought my first practice in the first year out. Um, and then over the course of the next several years, acquired several more practices and um, partnered in an ambulatory surgical center with an ophthalmology friend and you know, really just found the entrepreneur side of, of eye care, a lot of fun opening and running practices. And after about three or four years out, um, SUNY pinged me to come back and, and uh, help with the clinics and doing managed care contracting. So this is the early 90s when everyone was focused on managed care. So I joined uh, SUNY and just uh, practiced one or two days a week. And at SUNY, I built a, a managed care network to negotiate contracts and fees for um, medical eye services and did that for several years for SUNY and then was tasked with being the clinic director. Um, So I I helped uh, during that time establish many clinics throughout New York City. Uh, I think we had 36 clinics by the time I left there caring for about 75,000 people and um, really got a lot of experience both in academia, working with students, but also just in the the business world and, and negotiating contracts with hospitals, with insurance payers and learned a lot about the business world, um, and then went from there to small startup company in Baltimore called Imaginations, which is now called Rendia. And one of the reasons it did that is um, we launched an electronic medical record throughout all of SUNY. And I realized we could do everything but educate our patients electronically. We still had these trifold brochures and you know, wanted to find a better way to do that. And Imaginations was creating digital and animated education videos for eye care. I thought that was brilliant. Um, and joined them, uh, spent three years there, really helped to grow that business. And um, then was tapped by uh, Zeiss, Carl Zeiss Meditech. And uh, they said, we'd like to send you to business school and have you lead the US business. And it was a phenomenal opportunity for me. So I attended Harvard uh, Business School and, and uh, mentored under the CEO of, of Zeiss. Um, and then once I graduated from the program, I, I took over uh, US for ophthalmology, neurosurgery, dental, ENT, spine, and breast cancer sales of all the medical devices and um, six, spent six years there, really an incredible experience, You know, many hundreds of millions, international business, launched an incredible number of of uh, new technologies, focus on OCT and um, smile, uh, refractive procedure, and, and you know the Iowa Master 700, and really a lot of cool technologies. Learned a lot about innovation, about product market launches, and so forth. Then was asked um, by a private equity firm to be CEO of a small startup company in, in North Carolina called Tier Science in the dry eye space, and. I was really intrigued with that because I'd learned so much from Zeiss about um, product development and, and product launches. And so I thought I could really use that knowledge to, um, to you know, get, get that technology and that product more uh, into the hands of our, of our colleagues, better commercialized, better business model um, and you know, technology improvements and so forth. 
And so I joined Tier Science and uh, three years later were acquired by Johnson & Johnson Vision. Um, we experienced tremendous growth over those three years and got the attention of many strategics and Johnson & Johnson Vision seemed like the, the right home. Uh, they were really dedicated to, uh, uh, to dry eye and uh, spent about 18 months there in um, integration and then was uh, led me to where I am today, which is uh, Eureka or Euclid Systems um, as, the, as the CEO here. Yeah. So, um, you know, most of us have heard of Euclid. It's, it's, the name's probably more understood worldwide than it maybe is even here in the United States. But certainly, um, I think maybe you can correct me, is that the number two, uh, almost number one uh, ortho K system in, in, in the United States. And tell us a little bit about the origins of, of Euclid before you came on board. Yeah, I think it's a great story. Um, it's a 25-year-old company or more than 25-year-old company founded by George and Joanne Gladdy, uh, both industry veterans who you know, felt the, the need and, and the desire to start their own company and really focus on specialty contact lenses. And in particular, you know, way ahead of the curve, 25 years ago, they saw that myopia management was an important area to be in. And so they invested quite a bit of time, energy, money in developing a phenomenal lab, uh, lens designs. Uh, it did a lot of clinical work on, on uh, which ortho K designs helped to uh, best control myopia. And so the founders really were passionate about this way before it became sort of hip and popular. <laughs> and mm -hmm. Back then, you know, they knew the epidemiology and realized that the market in Asia was really important for this. And so not only did they focus on FDA and FDA approvals, they also worked very closely with the um, CFDA or now the NMPA in China to get approval there. So they were one of the first ortho K lenses approved in China about uh, 12, 14 years ago. And uh, one of the first in the U.S. as well. And uh, they spent a lot of their time, so as you can imagine, small mom and pop shop, so to speak. Yeah. Uh, they focused a lot of their marketing and sales efforts in China, knowing that the market over there is, is so uh, vast and, and the incidence is, is so much higher there. And they did really well and became the number one imported brand in China and have maintained that for all these years. Um, and they've always seen the U.S. as an important market, but secondary to them. And so they've always been sort of the number two player in the U.S. historically, uh, really because of lack of resources and just, you know, need to focus. And so um, that's that's the, the background of how Euclid, uh, Euclid Systems was founded. And then in 2019, Hill House Capital, which is a really large private equity firm uh, based in China, uh, fully acquired Euclid and um, put a lot of uh, resources into growing our, our capabilities here. So we've expanded quite a bit since that investment. And it, uh, that's when they brought me on, January of 2020, a couple months after they acquired. And um, I joined the company and it's been just a great ride since then. Yeah, I remember uh, meeting up with you in January of 2020 at the GSLS meeting and then we didn't see each other for a long time because of the <laughs> pandemic, right? So it just kind of, you came on board and then you've been doing all the work that you've done with Euclid, you know, under COVID, right? Yeah. Um, but yet uh, uh, Hill House, you know, has some interests in in growing of the company, obviously, beyond what, uh, what George and Joanna did with an amazing foundation. Um, What's, uh, what's some of the things that you're hoping to see uh, change within Euclid in, in the coming years as, as you see the market uh, you know, growing so much? Yeah, I think part of our core DNA uh, in the company has always been really strong R&D, really strong um, education and partnership with people like you, the, the brilliant educators around the world who really can uh, help to to not only educate the practitioners, that, but but also help us to to educate the the community, the the um, you know the industry, the the end patients in the end. This is really a condition that requires a lot of 
um, effort to ensure that parents and children are aware of options, that our optometry and ophthalmology colleagues uh, uh, hand, handle this and, and take it very seriously. And companies have a responsibility to invest in education and technology. And, um, you know, so the, the history of Euclid has always been to really support that, partnering with other industry partners, you know, working directly with groups that educate parents and children, um, and certainly through our clinical team, you know, educating and working with practitioners like you to educate um, our colleagues. So I think we're going to continue that history. We're also trying to modernize in a lot of ways. We created a My Euclid customer portal, uh, which uh, just recently launched. We're recruiting incredible talent. I'm so excited about the people that we're bringing into the company, really top tier people, uh, both from in the industry and outside, but largely from the industry. Uh, we are investing now in, in, in more clinical research and trials. We're growing our sales and marketing teams extensively around the world, um, including in the US. We just added uh, uh, two more people in the US, uh, Kelly Wesley and Christy Yee, two really great hires. I mean, again, industry veterans, talented people. Uh, so we're going to continue that, uh, that, that history. But in addition to that, we're growing our portfolio of products. So we are growing outside of ortho -K, and plan to uh, you know, have more products in our basket. We, we have ac acquired already several companies and will continue a very aggressive business development strategy to acquire even more, and, and not only in myopia, but in other areas of ophthalmology as well. Okay. So uh, I think it's been in the last two years, if I remember correctly, that uh, you guys have launched two new products, one of them being the Euclid Max, the material, and then you've got the uh, the toric lens uh, the, the, the with the peripheral toric that really has kind of uh, blown up in a lot of ways. Um, what, uh, you know, what is the kind of growth areas that you see, uh, you, you know, projecting? Obviously in myopia, is there, do you see that growth in, in, in building out new products or do you see that in growing the company and the awareness of the, of the products that you currently have? Do you, do you have a, a strategy that you're able to share on that? I do a little bit. Um, so we are, we are absolutely de developing new designs of lenses. So we have acquired recently some new IP that um, has not yet been developed. And so we we're working with a team of both optometrists and ophthalmologists and engineers to come up with some new designs that I think are gonna be leapfrog, really exciting, at least in concept today. And hopefully we can prove those out. So we are investing heavily in, in R&D, which I, I think is really exciting. We're gonna to continue to invest in, in material innovation. Uh, I think that's an area that you know, is maybe underestimated, but you know, to really appreciate the, not only the decay, but the wettability, the stability of materials and how they interact with the eye are really important. So we um, have invested in that area and polymer tech technology um, and then in, in digital. So we also are spending a lot of time researching out not only devices, but software tools to help aid and assist in, in making better decisions and better designs and maybe more customized designs. And um, so I think there's a lot of areas that our team, and, and by the way, we just uh, made an offer and they accepted for a new head, a global head of R&D. Um, and that individual will start with us and uh, hopefully very soon. So we're, you know, we're investing there. We're hiring uh, several more engineers and in, uh, innovation engineers. Uh, leadership, clinical people, and and uh, we'll continue to to in innovate our way into the future. I think that's really yeah. important. Yeah. So Henry Ford said that if he had asked the people what they wanted, they would have wanted a faster horse, right? Yeah. Uh, so you know, as 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 you and Euclid are looking at the market, what uh, what are you seeing is missing as to us? Uh, our tipping point, like what, 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 and then what is Euclid doing to help us help us get there? What is that tipping point to to get us over the edge? In ad boards, you ask me the same question, so I'm asking you. And in, in this format, is like, 
What do we got to do to get to that next level? Yeah. In, in myopia in general or in, in innovation? With, uh, with, yes. They're both. Yeah. I think, you know, look, I think for innovation, we're really still early stage. You see the big companies just coming out with their first generation of products today. Yep. Uh, here we are 25 years later into, into at least Euclid's life cycle. Um, so I think, I think this is the part of the innovation curve that's the upslope and we're, we're starting to see, uh, you know, really just getting past the early adopter stage and, and, and that's, what's really exciting. So I think, you know, I think we're at that stage in technology development where you're you're going to start seeing some really cool innovative ideas coming out of this new competitive environment now that you know it, it's sort of that chicken and egg situation where now that the practitioners are excited about it and they're demanding you know of the big companies and small companies where are more products and where's the innovation you didn't see that 10 years ago you know they were happy yeah. to have a product to fit right but today it's the demands are coming in where now that there's a real market for this and, and real demands, the innovation will catch up quickly, I believe. And that's why I yeah. think we're using our very long history of lens designers and experts in this area to, um, you know, to lead that. And, and so that, that, that's sort of thinking about a tipping point. That's, that's how I think of it today. It's, it's a, it's really a synergy between industry and, and, practitioners and where they both are in the life cycle of this condition. We see, we've, we, you know, we saw that with glaucoma, we see it with, you know, OCT technology. We saw it with refractive surgery. We saw it with dry eye. It's no different in myopia. Yeah. You know, we see this with every major condition. Well, I think that, I think that we can look back and, and, and you were part of this by and large with Zeiss, you know, uh, it, it seemed as in the, you know, the, the, those years that you were there in the two thousands that, we started learning about more, more and more glaucoma. Prior to that, it was a disease that was relatively difficult to diagnose. There wasn't a lot of treatment options. The practitioners were kind of like, eh, you know, but it really did explode from the practitioner, the education, the products that were treating, as well as the diagnostics all at once. And it, it, it really just expanded in that area. Do you think that you know, the Euclid of the future is going to be, you know, addressing many of those different aspects, the diagnostics, the, the therapeutics, the, you know, whatever it may be. Is that, is that the Euclid of the future that you see years down the road? Is that what you mean by all this research and development that you're talking about is something in that arena? I think months down the road, um, in my opinion, I think we're going to, um, we're going to be investing in all those areas in in 2022 so we're you know the advantage of being part of a large private equity firm is we have it, it we have good access to capital and we have the ability to as long as we can execute on our ideas we have the the ability to to pursue them and so we're we are aggressively pursuing not only all areas in myopia but um so euclid is part of a what we call a global ophthalmology platform. Um, and that global ophthalmology platform is called Eureka. Um, and that's really what I'm, I'm CEO of Eureka. Euclid is one of the subsidiaries of Eureka. And Eureka's mission is really to build a diversified global ophthalmology platform company that focuses on um, investing in growth that focuses on um, key markets, that focuses on innovation and um, focuses on the people. And so we're really looking not only in myopia, but other areas of um, exciting growth in ophthalmology. So areas like presbyopia or refractive or cataract. Um, so we're taking a holistic approach to that as a company. And I think Euclid and myopia will be a core foundational part of that story. And, and the reason why I think that's important to distinguish is that the synergies you, we will get from bringing in um, lens designs and, and, and ideas that aren't only focused on myopia, but could also assist in, um, in cataract surgery or refractive surgery or other parts of ophthalmology, 
that level of R and D and thought process and diversity, I think will make us a much better myopia company as well. So yeah. we're not only focused in myopia, we're really focused on ophthalmology and, on, and, and focus on building that platform. Now, Joe, uh, I don't know that too many people know about Eureka, uh, as Eureka as the name is, uh, when, when are we going to be, uh, hearing about this Eureka name and brand? When is that brand or is it going to always be a background supporting other companies like Euclid and others moving forward? Yeah, to, I think today we very much see it as um, a house of brands. I don't think we're trying to bring out Eureka as a, its own brand. Uh, Eureka is essentially just a holding company that um, mm -hmm. allows all these subsidiaries to sit under one one entity. So it's more of a today, at least, more of a legal entity structure than than anything. So our our hope is, like many great companies out there, to have incredible brands underneath that Eureka umbrella and that yep. Eureka won't be necessarily the star of the show. It's still going to be Euclid or, you know, name the next great company that, that is part of that. Um, so yeah. that, that's how we view it. And, and our strategy really is, is purposeful in that way because we feel that, you know, we don't want to inhibit innovation. Innovation is going to be such a critical part of our story. And we believe that that startup mentality, that individuality of each of these great um, assets that we buy has to be maintained. The culture, the um, innovation and speed has to be maintained. So there will be little to no integration in these entities. There will be heavy investment. They will be, you know, so we're going to focus on investing in manufacturing and R&D and doing clinicals and, and really invest in their growth, their speed of, 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 of innovation and growth. Um, and and that's, that's sort of the secret sauce, I think, that would differentiate us from other larger um, ophthalmology companies out there that are much more integrated, much more, I would say, formal structure that you're used to. This will be more of a collection of great companies all under one umbrella. Yeah. So supporting those companies to integrate uh, or to invest in, in, in innovate in new things rather than integrate everything together and have a slow moving ship, have a lot of quick little ships that can move around uh, very quickly. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. You're spot on. You're spot on. Well, cool. Well, Joe, you, you've brought some really great enlightenment. I, I love you as a leader. I love how you invest in the people. That's been something I've always uh, appreciated uh, about you. And, uh, and tell us a little bit about how you're doing that right now at Euclid and investing in your team and so forth. You've mentioned the, the growth that you've brought about, um, but I always love hearing you talk about leadership and, and, and growing your people. You, you're a humble leader, which I really appreciate. And I've always appreciated about you. Thank you. Yeah, that's really kind of you to say. And, uh, you know, I, th I think with our leaders, if, you know, for me, it's always, you know, we've been moving very methodically and slow to make sure we bring in the right people because an environment like this is not for everybody. So I think it's yeah. ensuring first and foremost that this is a right fit for you and uh, ensuring that the, the team really understands what we're trying to build here. This is as, as I said before, not a typical big company. Uh, this is a fast moving, you know, where we're every day it's, 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 um, you know, doing hard work, rolling up your sleeves and, and being a, um, a coach player. And so it takes a certain individual to want to be in that. So I think first and foremost, it's finding the right talent and making sure that they fit. Second is, you know, in, ensuring that they have the tools and resources that they need to to, to really be successful. And, you know, in an environment like this, there's no opportunity to micromanage. There's, there's, you really have to pick great people and let them run fast. And so for me, a lot of it is, is that talent management is, is it, it's really finding the right ingredients, putting them together and letting them uh, be successful in every way possible. We're, we're also very much run like a meritocracy where, you know, I have experience from, let's say, Zeiss in a certain area. I get put on projects just like anyone else in engineering or any other part of the company. If they're like, hey, Joe, you know how to do this, join, join that group. That's how we operate. We're not operating in silos or in a very, um, 
um, strict hierarchy it doesn't work that way. So I'll be put on a project just like a, a brand new engineer who walks in the door. And so it, I, I really enjoy that environment as well, where we all just work together as one big team. And, um, you know, so for me, that's, I think that's an important leadership lesson as well. There's nothing above or below anybody, you know, we just, yeah, we just come in and, and, and work together to, to, to get to the end goal, you know? And, yeah. and so for me, that's the environment I'm, I'm working really hard to create. Some people thrive in that environment, some people don't. And so it's, it's always, you know, making sure that we pick and choose the right people and, and allow them to be successful in that environment. And then we've done all kinds of, um, I would say, you know, um, skill building opportunities, for example, um, allowing leader, lower level leaders to present um, it at, at quarterly business reviews and, you know, really mentoring and fostering them. So I'm mentoring two employees directly myself. And, you know, we work on, on everything from basic business skills, things, you know, cases that I learned at Harvard and we share and sit and discuss them. Um, and then we'll do, you know, roundtable discussions where we'll have sort of lunch and learns in the, in the company and, and allow employees to teach other employees about, about things that they've learned. And so I think it's also fostering that environment where everyone's teaching each other. It's not just higher level people teaching lower level people. It's, it's sort of across the board. If you learn something interesting, put together five or six slides, we'll get, we'll get pizza, go in the conference room and tell us about what you learned and let's discuss it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it sounds like thing. it's it's really squishing things down as opposed to have this really high up it, where you have to check in with everybody where you're shrinking things down so everybody can run fast without having to check in on every single little detail about things. That's that's brilliant. Yeah. 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 So that's, that's the environment here. That's the culture we're Very working cool. hard to, to establish. And, um, it's fun. Like I said, not everyone likes that. Some people like the, the strict hierarchies and, and, um, so forth, but that it, it, that's the kind of environment you like, you would thrive here. That's, yeah. that's what I enjoy. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you for hanging out with me, Joe, and, uh, and being part of the myopia podcast, always, uh, an honor to get to chat with you. Same here, David. I'm really honored to be on the program and I've been listening to all of, all of the shows all the way along and, and really enjoyed learn as always learned so much, not only from you, but your interaction with others, the questions you ask and the insights you bring. So thank you so much. Keep up the great work. And thank you. Yeah. It's, it's a lot of fun. I learned so much. I, you know, uh, if, if I didn't do the podcast for the industry, I'd doing it for me as much as anything, just so I can learn all this from, from incredible people and thank you we all for get being to benefit. one of them. No, uh, we all get this. to benefit from that really. It's, it's, yeah. it, it's our benefit, so thank you for doing it. Yeah. Well, thank you, Joe. And thank you for joining us for this episode of the Myopia Cod Podcast. Make sure to like and subscribe so you can stay tuned to all the other great episodes that are on their way. We'll see you next time. This podcast was brought to you by Optometric Insights Media. If you enjoy our content, please leave a five-star review. And don't forget to subscribe for more great episodes.